Hey guys, so I have a lot of people who ask me, how do you grow squash and pumpkins here in Southwest Florida? How do you do it? It's so hard. It's so hot, so humid. There's so many pests. So I thought that I would share um, a video on tips and tricks that help me have a harvest of squash every season. So, the first thing to know is what's the difference between summer and winter squash? There's two main types of squash, summer and winter. Summer squash is the fresh kind that you eat right away. It's not good for storage like zucchini, um, like yellow summer squash or patty pans. Those, are, those all have to be cut up and eaten right away unless you can preserve them somehow. Um, in the kitchen, you have to prepare them to, to can them and preserve them or freeze them. Um, and then there's winter squash like pumpkins or Hubbard squash, um, butternut spaghetti squash. Those are all winter squash that are good for storage um, that you can have in your pantry long term and they won't rot and they'll be ready for you whenever you need to eat them. So when we're choosing summer squash specifically, you really want to look at days to maturity. So the earlier um, days to harvest that you have, the better chance you have of getting a good um, harvest before the, the plants actually succumb to the powdery mildew or the pests that we have here that we deal with. So I personally choose um, varieties that are 45 to 50 days to maturity. I usually will not choose anything if it's over that, unless it's something that I really want to try growing because it looks interesting or very pretty. Um, usually I will just choose 45 to 50 days. The varieties I have in my garden right now are gray zucchini, which you can see here. There's two of them on this one. They have this silvery foliage foliage. Here's another one of lots of gray zucchini. I also am growing this early prolific straight neck squash, which is not um, producing anything yet over here. I planted these at a later date. And then I also planted these passion golden Marbray scallop squash, which is like a yellow patty pan. Um, all of these squashes are 45 to 50 days to harvest. There is another type of squash I'm growing that I didn't show you. Um, there's actually two more varieties of summer squash that I didn't show you. One of them is right here. It's called a white moonbeam squash. You can see it's just a white patty pan by the female flowers there. And then the other one is called a Zappolito squash. I found in the past that this Zappolito squash is much more resistant to the powdery mildew and the bugs than the rest of my squash. Last spring I grew this and it lasted all summer long. And when my other plants were dying, this one was still moving on even though it had pests as well. Here I have a Zappolito squash and a white moonbeam squash that I harvested in the last few days. They're very good and um, the Zappolito has a little more earthy flavor, but it's still good. And I, I do eat it and enjoy it. The next um, thing you want to look for when, when you're choosing your varieties of winter squash is once again, um, early varieties are best here. So I chose some delicata squash. Connecticut field pumpkins are not an early variety. And this I would, I would definitely try ch growing through the winter before a freeze. So you'd have to see how many days to maturity. And then you would track back from your first frost date and plant it in time for a harvest before your freeze date in the winter. So there are three main species of squash, of winter squash specifically. There's C. pepo, C. maxima, and C. mistrata. In Florida... C. Peppo and C. Maxima are fairly difficult to grow. This red curry squash is a C. Peppo variety. And so 
I chose it because it's an early variety. I believe it was 70 days to maturity. Most winter squash are anywhere from 90 to 120 days. So I thought, this is 70 days. I may have a good chance of getting some of these squash before um, it dies, basically. So I'm taking this chance. And this has beautiful flowers all over it. It's very tall. And I, I do uh, grow them on cattle panels. And I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. This is a pumpkin here. This is called a um, black futsu squash or a black Japanese pumpkin. This is a C. mistrata variety. C. mistrata varieties do best here in Florida. Um, there's quite a few varieties that you can get. This is one of them. Um, the reason being is because they have hollow stems. And so if you, um, if a vine, they're vine borer resistant, um, they keep, um, if they let them go on the ground, they will um, reroute all along the main stem. And if, if part of the plant dies, it'll just keep growing for you, which is a huge bonus. The pests, the humidity, the powdery mildew doesn't really seem to phase these guys. So if you really, really want to grow pumpkins and squash for winter squash, I highly re recommend the C. Mistrata variety. And I even recommend them for winter and summer squash, which may sound weird because they're winter storage squash. So C. Mistrata varieties are very different and unique in that you can harvest them when they're still green and they will still be edible and they will still be usable and taste good for you. So this black futsu squash is, is black, but when it's fully ripened, it turns tan. And you can harvest this when it's super dark green or black and it will still be good for you to eat. Over here, I have another variety, which is the honey nut squash. This is also a C. mistrata variety. It's, it's essentially a miniature butternut squash. And this is about 120 days to, heart, to um, maturity as well. So even though this thing is loaded with little squash, I know that I need to be very patient because this is gonna take me a very, it's gonna take this plant a very long time to mature these squash. This is actually a new variety for me that I'm growing this year. And it's very interesting because every single flower, whoops, every single flower seems to be a female. So that's interesting. I'm not really sure how, it is an heirloom as well, so I'm supposed to be able to save seeds from it um, for the following year. But I'm not sure how you can do that with just female flowers. This is four plants. <laughs> um, it's just a mystery to me. I'm still figuring it out. Um, so, but they're all doing the same thing. So I guess we'll just wait and see how it goes. Maybe they'll put off male flowers later on. Over here, I have another C. mistrata variety. These are seminal pumpkins. And I grew these, I, I've, I grew the, I saved these seeds from last year. Um, I, I had two plants last year and I, I harvested anywhere, probably about 10 pumpkins, eight to 10 pumpkins. Um, and they taste just like pumpkins that are orange and from the grocery store, like that you would buy. And these do really well here in Florida. So like I said, I recommend C. Mistrata varieties or if they're C. Pepo and Maxima, getting early varieties. The other option that you can do for varieties that are not C. mistrata varieties is get a hybrid. A hybrid might seem like a scary word, but it's simply a plant that comes from two different parent plants. So the male plant may be a C. mistrata variety and the female plant may be a C. pepo variety or whatever, um, something like that. Um, and this, it's not, if you save seed from this plant, um, you know, you more than likely won't get the same exact plant next year. You could, but you probably won't. It may have um, different characteristics from its parent plants. So this is a small wonder spaghetti squash plant. Um, it's pretty loaded with spaghetti squash. Um, and these are miniature spaghetti squash. They do not get as big, but it gives me lots of them. And so, 
I really love these plants. This is only two vines here. And I've grown these for quite a few years and I grow them every year um, because they're one of my favorites. I always get squash for them. I've tried growing regular spaghetti squash. It is not a Zima shot variety and it has um, failed and I never get a harvest. So with the, most hybrids are, first of all, hybrids can be a good thing because one, they put off, most of them will put off a lot of female flowers first. So if I'm growing summer squash, it's putting out male flowers, and I'm also growing this small under spaghetti squash, these squash are gonna get pollinated, okay, um, early. They don't put off a ton of, most squash will put off male flowers first for a week or two before they set female flowers. Um, and that's just a fact, that's just how they work. Um, but, so having um, female flowers first, really helps benefit um, really helps benefit because you get more fruit started before you know it, it a lot faster than having to wait for the female flowers to show up so it gets you just like an early start the second thing about hybrids is that they tend to be more pest resistant and they tend to be more um, disease resistant and they usually have a, sh a shorter lifespan so days to maturity anyway usually have a shorter amount of days to maturity and so you can usually get um, you know a, a quite a big harvest before the summer even hits so this is two plants I, I, I started these on January 31st and I, I couldn't wait till February <laughs> I did it a day early um, the evening before and uh, uh, it is March, it's, it's mid-March, and I have, these are just loaded with pollinated squash. Some I hand pollinated, some from the bees. There's one here, two, three, four, uh, five and six. This one was my first squash I hand pollinated, seven and so on. And there's, there's another one. There's just so many, there's, there's lots of them and they keep going. Um, and there's still tons of female flowers on here that are going to be pollinated as well. So first off, choosing the correct squash varieties is very important when you live here in our climate. And these are the reasons why. So now, since we've talked about varieties to pick, We've also talked about time of year to plant. Now we're gonna talk about prevention. Things that we do to care for our squash to ensure that we get a good harvest. So eventually these plants are going to succumb to the disease, the powdery mildew, that hot, sticky, wet, rainy season that we get here in South Florida every single um, end of spring and summer. Um, and also, pests. We have this problem called uh, pickle worms and stink bugs, which we talked about earlier. So things that I do is the first thing that I do is I check my plants every day, which may be hard, but I check. I look under the leaves for bug, for bug eggs, for stink bugs or leaf-footed bug eggs, just like this every single day, once a day. It takes me five minutes. I do that while I'm walking my while I let my dog out. <laughs> um, the other thing I do is pruning. So, did you know that you can prune squash? I will show you over here because it's easier to see. But pruning your squash has so many benefits. One, it puts your plants energy instead of all these leaves on the on the ground and stuff, and these big giant leaves. It puts more energy into flowers and squash. So, when you prune your squash leaves, the plant uses that energy to put into more flowers and more squash instead of lots of leaves. The second benefit of it is that it allows birds and wasps to come down here and, and to be able to, to get down there and pick and eat those, those worms for you and caterpillars for you. Um, it's, I see wasps all the time coming down here and picking them. So, those bugs 
specifically love, their favorite thing in the world is to eat dead plant matter and rotting plant matter. So if you have all these sickly squash leaves down on the ground, you can see, look, look at all these that I pruned off a couple days ago. Like these don't look very good. Well, I mean, they're rotting now, but that, you know, they love that kind of stuff. They love to eat it. So anything like that, I would just come out here and pick it off. They are spiky plants. So when you are pruning, you do want to wear some gloves to protect your hands or you can be very itchy. Um, the other benefit of it is it allows you to see in there better. You can see in there better, make sure there's no bugs hiding in there because the worms really love getting in those flowers. I also, not only the leaves do I prune off, I also pick off any dead, le dead flowers. So if they've opened and then they're closed back up like this guy right here, I will gently tug on a female flower <clears throat> and pull it off if it's ready. If it's still stuck, I'll wait till another day or two to pull it off. I don't pull the flowers off of female plants unless they're ready and easily come off. But male flowers, I definitely prune them off. I cut them off or I pinch them off and just toss them in the mulch so that the bugs aren't attracted to it. Just like this, here's a dead flower. Well, it's not dead, but it's already opened. I just pull it off and toss it aside. So now we're gonna talk about another thing that I do. I attract birds to my garden. I hang bird feeders in my garden, specifically near my squash plant. There's two mockingbirds right there, Florida State bird. And I will um, attract them to my garden. Like I said, wasps and birds, they love eating those soft body insects, those caterpillars and worms, they just love them. And there's many times I will see um, them under the, on the ground, looking, checking on all the leaves and pecking the um, caterpillars off my plants. It's very, very helpful. So we've talked about pruning. We've talked about attracting birds and wasps by air, giving them more aeration here by pruning so they can easily get to the center of your plant where the bugs hide. I've never had a bird eat my squash, <laughs> okay? Never. Um, and so now I'm going to talk about a, a good grow, growing habit that you can have for trailing squash. A great habit is putting them up on a trellis. This aids in aeration for the leaves to help them dry faster during a rainy season. Um, it helps keep the moisture off of them. It helps you prune them and see bugs easier. As we look through here, I can see, you know, look down here, there's some dead stuff. I'm gonna pull this out. I can see all the flowers. I can see the main part of the plant easily. I can look for bugs easily. So having these cattle panels is amazing or some kind of trellis. That's what I use as, as cattle panels for mine. Um, it's amazing, it's great. It gets them off the ground where bugs like to get into them. Um, so that's another tip I have for you. So do I use chemicals on my plants to get rid of bugs? Um, not really so much anymore. I used to. I used to use Thuricide spray or BT spray or neem oil. Um, they all essentially do the same thing. Um, and I've found my favorite of those is um, diatomaceous earth. Now there are some cautions with that. It will kill the bees. So right now, when I have flowers open on my squash, I absolutely do not use any of those things. But early in the season, before my plants start to flower, I will happily take a handful of diatomaceous earth and I spread it around like this, or it comes with a puffer if you have one of those, and it puffs the, the dust of the diatomaceous earth all over the foliage and any kind of chewing insect will, will eat it and it will kill them. Now it does kill the bees though, so that's a caution. I don't use it this time of year. Instead, I opt for pruning and hand picking the bugs off of my squash. Something I've done in the past, which I do with my kids, is I have them, I have five children and I have them come out here 
and I'll tell them for every little caterpillar you find, I'll give you, you know, two cents. Or if you find a hornworm caterpillar for tomatoes and peppers, I'll give you, you know, 10 cents. And I bring out my husband's coin jar and I give them, you know, money and they, they just drop it. I have a cup of soapy water and they just pick them and they drop them in the soapy water and I give them what they've earned. Um, and it's helpful and they think it's super fun. So that's just an idea for you guys as well. So I think I've covered it all pretty much um, of how I grow and take care of my squash. Choosing varieties is extremely important. C. mistrata and early varieties do best um, for winter and summer squash. Now all C. mistrata varieties will do well here. So most C. mistrata varieties are 120 plus days, um, but they will all do well here. So. Um, I don't worry about days to maturity on C. mistrata varieties. And there are many more varieties that I'm not even growing here. Um, there's Zucchino Rampicante. That's one of my favorite squash varieties to grow. Unfortunately, this year, I went to sow some and none of them sprouted. Um, I saved my own seed and I, I believe that I had error in what I did last year for those. But, um, yeah. So, and they, they can be harvested green and they taste like zucchini, or you can let them get hard and tanned and they taste like butternut, a lot of people say. I prepare them, I roast them, prepare them like mashed potatoes and they taste like mashed potatoes to me and my kids. So, we love it. Um, I'm definitely gonna plant some more in um, the fall. So, in September. So I hope this has helped you. Um, just keep trying, don't give up. Um, it, it can, you have to be vigilant about picking and pruning. I prune my squash once a week, um, sometimes every four or five days, depending on when I have time, but I try to at least do it once a week. Um, I did these about three days ago. So three days ago, they were much even clearer than this. You could see the soil here. Squash grows super fast, which is why they're so fun to grow, I think. <laughs> um, okay, so I hope that was helpful. I hope that you all can get out there and grow some squash, get some good varieties of squash. The C. Mastrata is C dot, Mastrata is M-O-S-C-H-A-T-A. -A. And I'll try to get it written on the screen if I can figure out how to do that for you. Okay, so I hope you all try, give, give it a go and try um, growing some squash. Happy gardening. <laughs>